What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rianne Fran giving you that Friday energy on a Wednesday. We're giving that midweek motivation. We got that Friday energy going on this lovely, beautiful Tuesday afternoon. Beautiful and week. the weather is gorgeous. It the is. The weather's gorgeous. It's May. Things are looking beautiful. It's almost already borderline too hot. Like it's what? Like, you think too hot already? 80 degrees in Manhattan is like not comfortable. I feel like on a day like today though, it gets a little breezy. Yeah, so no, absolutely. It's been it's been beautiful and it's just gear and gets you so excited for summer. So excited. The so weather excited. has me dying. Dying yeah. to get to an amusement park. <laughs> I don't know what it is in me, but I must get to an amusement park. I'm dying to get to Universal or Six Flags as soon as possible. Thought about going today. I said, what do we have to do today? Do we have time to make it to Six Flags? Because I have to get there. We'd be smarter to do Six Flags at some point this summer and then do Universal like in the fall. Because Universal, like, it, it's brutal to go to Universal in the summer. I went to Universal in the summer and I it's, didn't find it brutal at all. I had a wonderful time. Oh, it's too hot for me. I had a great time. It is time. humid and gross and yuck. I didn't find it that yuck. I'm. I do. <laughs> I, I, I. I guess. I just feel like I would realize something like that, and maybe Florida I love Universal too is, much. But you don't like. You don't mind the heat. I guess not. When it's too hot, yeah. definitely everybody minds it. But I'm not like. I don't know. I guess I. I. I could see why somebody would say. Listen, Florida. Like I don't want to go to in Florida the, in, in July. The summer <laughs> is terrible. But I think it's because I used to spend a lot of my time in the summer every single year of my life in Florida. Yes. So that's probably why. Probably. But Universal is so awesome. Like I'm not, I love Disney, right? But I'm not like, oh my God, you have to go to Disney as an adult. Like, yeah, one time go to Epcot, but you could really drink anywhere. Yeah. Universal is fucking awesome. The I do the, like Disney uh, as an Disney's adult, better. I will say. I no, Disney. Disney is Disney's not better, better than Universal. It it's is. not even close. No, it it's not even close. Universal is so interactive. The if you're a roller coaster person, if you're a ride person, it's Universal all the way, and that's me wholeheartedly. Love a I good just ride. Disagree. No. I, like Universal has everything: Jaws, Twister, Disney's Harry a Potter experience. World, Jurassic Park. They got everything. Disney has everything. Disney doesn't have the 4D uh, type. Ex they have some, they but do. not, but about? not on the level that Universal does. I think they do, and not like. When's the last time you went to Disney World? Disney and Universal. I went uh, five years ago, the summer right before I worked at Barstool. And I went both. I went, I went to both. And Universal is just my cup of tea. I could see why someone would say Disney better, yeah, of course. Just I mean, they're, they're just different. different experiences. Disney's Apple and Universal is Samsung. No. No. Yeah. I mean, because of the names. Because Disney is Disney, right? That's just, what I'm saying. But, but Samsung also comes up with all the ideas first and then Apple steals them. So. Makes them better. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. But as specific parks... If you are looking for more of a thrill, you're going to go to Universal. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm not going to either one of those places for, like, the love of the rides. Well, then why would you go to those places? <laughs> no, 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 because I, I think they're fun and, like, the rides are fun. But, like, if I'm, if I'm like, I really want to go on some roller coasters, I'm going to Six Flags. Like yes. the roller coaster, like neither universe, neither Universal nor Disney have like epic roller coasters. They, Universal they some has some really yeah, cool, but not like Six roller Flags. coasters. Not like Six Flags. Six Flags is a full blown roller coaster park. Mm -hmm. Universal is an experience. That's it's, what I'm saying. That's what so I'm saying. Disney. Disney, of course, is an experience, and it's it's a great experience. It's a fun experience. Magic Kingdom. Drink, Magic also, Kingdom. Just you have a drink, love for Disney. Drinking not, around like. the world. Oh, they got Star Wars there now. Things Tower are great terror. there. Tower Animal Tower. Kingdom, I like. Tower Space Tower Mountain. doesn't even exist anymore. I, yeah, gotcha. uh, Space Mountain, but Space Mountain is like, yeah, you know, it doesn't, it just doesn't line up with the 4D attractions at Universal. Yeah, also maybe you like performances, you Disney like to see the 4D. parades. They have a what's it called? Like you're you're in a chair and it makes you feel like you're going in space, like you have G force. Yes, I, people I've who done throw it. Throw up on that, like yeah, yeah, but there's just something like Universal. I feel like is more about. It's hard to explain. Like the the movies. That's fine. You like the Mets? 
That's like the same thing. It's like they're not the Yankees. <laughs> oh my god! What? Yeah, the? Noah's getting owned. way too bold. I mean, <laughs> no, we're coming. Disney. We got to be loyal to Disney. Oh no, that's not even why. No, 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 I just Disney is the best. When's the last time you've been to Disney? Disney World. Yeah. Not since I was like a kid. Okay, and when's the last time you were in Universal? Uh, a couple years ago, or five years ago in LA. Not the same. They're just what? totally what? Di- they're Universal just in Florida things. is not the same as Universal in LA. But like, it's still Universal. No. Like, some might argue that Universal is better. Like, I don't know in LA. No. How do you know? I Disneyland's in LA. Because Universal say, has think, Harry Potter World in Florida. Well, I mean, there is a Harry Potter World. Is uh, there? As well in, in Universal uh, in, in California. <laughs> that kind of defeats my argument there. <laughs> like, they're they're... But they Florida. have the same thing in just original. different places. Don't get me wrong. I, I had a lot of fun when I went, but it's not Disney. There's also just something. Um, I don't know if it's just because in Florida it's Disney World and California's Disneyland. Yeah. Like it's, I think the full you get more of the full experience at Disney, like in Florida, for both parks. Mm-hmm. Even though, but yeah, Universal is just also just more niche I stuff. Can tell Fran that, I can tell Fran is like, kind of I really love being careful of about what to say because out there it, it definitely she was definitely making it seem like she liked universal better oh really no, yeah I, no for way. sure well well i love harry potter <laughs> i was world. gonna say Duh. i thought she was on my side this whole time no, no that's what i'm saying but out there she definitely was like you know talking a big game about universal being like a little bit better than i Disney. don't think i did mm, it kind of seemed like you what were did I out say? there what did it i just, say you were like you were like you kind of seemed like you were like universal I would rather go if we're going with people from with from work. I would in, rather go to Universal in life. In life, I want to go to Disney. That makes no sense. Why does the people at work dictate which one you're going to? Because it's just the experience. I don't really want to like be doing all my Disney stuff with people from What's work. What's the Disney stuff you're speaking of? Everything. Okay. I'm not trying to wear my Minnie Mouse ears with people from work. What? I mean, you don't have to do. I don't do that. No, no I, know, I mean, I, but but if I'm going to Disney, I'm I'm going to Disney. Yeah, but you're not gonna wear you. You're embarrassed to wear your Minnie Mouse ears in front of people at no, work. No, I just am. I would just <laughs> now. That, now we're getting crazy. Disney. <laughs> I would just rather be with people I'm closer with. Oh my gosh! I can, <laughs> like, I, I can going see around. It's a small world. Like you want to be like with no, people just, that you really like, know. I don't know. I just like. Disney, you can make Universal into a longer like a trip. trip. Universal like is like a there. day. Yeah, it's a day. Two days because there's two parks. So you got to go one on one day. How many then... parks does Disney World have? Like five, six? There's four. I think there's four. Yeah, I mean, you can do Universal in a day. You could, but if I've you done. really want the full blown experience, I suppose. But I, <laughs> I don't. You, you like don't necessarily need to drag it to two days. Yeah, I think you could do it all in a day. You could like we 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 could take a day trip to Universal. Yeah. Either way, they got E.T. there. E.T. is great ride. <laughs> Whatever. Universal stan. I love I Universal. Lo- I, I mean, Sue me. Look, I, w- I was obsessed with Harry Potter World. Loved it. Loved every part of it. Have so you, I'm, anytime I want to go, compounds? I'm going to want to go to Air- Harry no. Potter World. Oh, that's a great one. It's a where? Lake Compounds. It's in uh, Connecticut. It's like right by ESPN. Mm-mm. Oh, that's a, good, that's a good one. I think we can all agree that is Six Flags a, is, is awesome. Is it an amusement, it's an amusement park? park? But oh. like, it has a water park and it's like... But it's not Six you Flags. You know the coolest thing they have there? All the soda is free. Everywhere you go. Everywhere that's you go. That's so dangerous. That it was the coolest thing as a kid. Every, every American venue things I've go, ever heard. The soda Go to an amusement free. park Unlimited. with free soda. That's so dangerous for me to hear. I love soda so much. It's awesome. Have you been to the Six Flags in New Jersey? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Not in so, a while. I went to the one in... um. Massachusetts, that one's really cool too. Yeah, Six Flags is awesome. Hershey's awesome. Oh, Hershey's cool. Six, the Six Flags in in Jackson, New Jersey, is elite. Have on, you gone on King Duca? Yes, I've been oh, on I've every never. roller coaster in Six Flags. <laughs> Same. On the scale, I'll uh, next next podcast. I'm gonna have a ranking of all my amusement parks. You guys do the same. I've really only ever. Have been you to ever like two. Been to Playland. Just from on the outsider's perspective yeah. too. Like you've heard Bush Garden sucks, but then rank it like low. Yeah, I, I just I haven't been to it. Like I've been to Hershey, Six Flags, and like Disney and Universal. That's it. I'm trying to think of what other ones that I've been to. What's I think the place? I might have been to one in Ohio that I'm forgetting about. And then oh then we got water parks in the mix. 
Oh yeah, there's some like just just water parks like only dedicate to that. Which I are, used like, to love water. water parks until I realized how gross water yeah. parks really are, yeah. and then you never want to go to a yeah. roller par- uh, roller park water park water again. Park, yeah. All right, let's get into the topics yeah. <laughs> on today's episode. Y'all ready for this? This is what happens when you can't play music. I'm so unfortunate. We got the MTV Movie and TV Awards. We're going to talk about everything that happened. Addison Rae stealing the show, the outfits, the Outer Banks cast, absolutely rocking the red carpet. The Jonas Brothers may be going on tour with Kelsey Ballerini. They're putting some hints out there. And there was a TikTok that went viral mm-hmm. that Fran will talk about. Mm-hmm. Jed has finally spoken. Jed is releasing Jed Talks about three months too late. Yeah. And Ariana Grande is officially married to Dalton Gomez. And we have an interview with Dolores Catania from Real Housewives of New Jersey. Always a blast having any of the housewives yeah. on the show. So let's get into it, starting off with MTV Movie and TV Awards. Like we talked about in the beginning of the show, you know, the weather's getting warmer. Things are looking up. The world is seemingly getting a little bit more back to normal. And what's better than that all, you know, coming into place, everything getting right, and then you also getting yourself right as well. If you've been listening to the show, you've heard us talk about the care of vitamins. You go online to takecareof.com. You enter, uh, you know, you fill out a quiz, cater to you, and it decides which vitamins are best for you. I take vitamin D every day. I take iron every day, and I take fish oil every day because the, uh, response to my quiz were those things and I trust care of and every day it's in these cute little packages it's made for me you know you don't have has a bunch your name of on it. has your name on it doesn't you don't have a bunch of bottles you got to you know keep track of it's these little cute packets that you take every day cater to you and it's the best thing ever it's I think it's one of the greatest things I've ever done to be completely honest because when else are you going to get yourself a check with vitamins you know you're going to go to the doctor the doctor says, oh you need this vitamin you're oh, okay No, if you go online to takecareof.com and you fill out the quiz, they're going to tell you exactly what you need. And it's a better way to take a look inside of yourself. See what's going on with you. Answer some questions about yourself. Get to know yourself. Go to takecareof.com, enter CITO code 50, and you will get 50% off your first order. So everybody, go to takecareof.com and use our code CITO50. The MTV Movie and TV Awards were Sunday night, and oh my gosh, were they hot and heavy, and I love it. I loved it. I feel like we got some OG MTV. Everybody was making out all over the place. Addison Rae stole the show, I think, because her outfit was insane. She was wearing, whoa, I was like, oh my God, is that Britney Spears or Addison Rae? Which we're not comparing Britney and Addison, yeah. but I just felt like it had that kind of vibe. And then, of course, the big, big topic of the night was the best kiss category, which included, you know, some of our favorites, yeah. Chase and Madeline, Outer Banks. They won. And Addison introduced the award with her co star Tanner, and they made out. Mm-hmm. And then Madeline and Chase won, and then they made out. And it was steamy. This has got to be the strategy going forward for the MTV Movie and TV Awards. Because one, didn't even know they were on. Had no idea. Like, wasn't watching. <laughs> Two, you got to have this. You got to have those moments. Like, the only, the biggest moments that I can think of in history from the MTV Movie Awards, TV Awards, now they combine, whatever, whatever it's called, is the best kiss. Always. It's, it's always, always about the, the best kiss. Out. It's always about what couple wins, if the couple's dating in real life, if they're not, if they go up there and do the kiss again. And, you know, it's like you hear it all the time. Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams was the best moment ever. You're never going to top it. And Chase and Madeline adore them. Still not going to top it. But it's just like the that's what they need to be doing. You can't have a best kiss category winner that isn't going to go up there and make fucking out. make out like you crazy. Just, you really need it to happen. And Addison, whatever team Addison has around her, whoever's informing her, help whatever whatever she's doing, it's all the right things because she was by far the most talked about person from the whole night. The outfit and then also just straight up making out with Tanner before the 
award even like that'll get people to watch he's all that if you didn't know that they were in a movie together now you know yeah and here's the deal addison ray she's a real deal celebrity whether you like that or you don't and a lot of people are really bitter about it and i really don't like to see that because it's here's the deal. <laughs> it's 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 so much jealousy yeah because people are so jealous that this girl who got famous off of doing some dances on tiktok right they just they write her off and they're like oh she's she's no talent whatever they say that about the kardashians because yeah, it's they're just jealous. a newer avenue they're, to the same yeah, thing. They're jealous of the success that she's having. They're jealous she's experiencing all these things. They're jealous that she's got music and she can be in movies mm -hmm. and she's really covering it all. And people hate to see uh, someone like that succeed. I love it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm with you. I think she's doing everything right. Yep. Besides that second dress she wore. Because I hated the second dress. I loved the first outfit. I, you know, sexy. It was risky. I liked it. The second dress wasn't for me. It was sexy and risky. Yes. Did I like it? No. <laughs> I I loved the... Like, like you said, it was... Um, you talk about an outfit like that. So I understand it. I get it. Um, the skirt thing wasn't my favorite. It was either like for me, it was like do the skirt thing and have like a bigger top or have like the tiny top over like your nipples and like maybe a little bit more of like a different kind of skirt situation. But either way, it doesn't matter. She, she, it's like. I fucked with it because it yeah, was bold. Does, yeah, exactly. Like she didn't, she, she was going saying. tiny on bottom, tiny on, tiny didn't on top and matter. I like that. Didn't even matter. Yeah. I thought and there it was, was a jacket that you wore on the carpet right. too that. I thought it was bold and whenever you make a bold choice like that, good for you. Yep. In, in terms of like. You don't usually see Addison Rae. It was MTV. Ray. It was MTV. You don't usually see Addison Rae like that. So I thought yeah. it was awesome that she was owning that moment. And like I said, people are going to hate because of jealousy. How you could say whatever all. you want. Oh, my God. Right, come on. It's not even a competition at this point. They don't. They, I hate that no, people I, even... No, I know, but I just... When you're talking about jealousy, like, and I get it from the outsider's perspective, but from someone, like, in Bryce's situation... He's he's just gonna get left in the yeah, dust. You don't want to see your ex girlfriend yeah, looking like he, that good. Like she's uh, just um, she's just on going the MTV up, up, awards, up, 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 up. making out with somebody who, by the way, he has a girlfriend, Tanner. So I can't imagine his girlfriend. I mean, I'm I sure she gets that. it because I did look she, that up because I loved yeah. him on Cobra Kai. Right? She did. She knows. What, very she knows what she's signing up for. She knows that's her boyfriend. Uh -huh. But you can't. That's some be good happy promo. You can't be happy with your boyfriend making out with Addison Ray. Nope. I know I wouldn't be. <laughs> like, your and boyfriend's making out with Addison Ray. I do think they have been together for a long time. Um, but I also... But I don't he know. looked it, into it. <laughs> yeah, I told you that I had I had a crush on this kid after watching Cobra Kai. He's a child, Francesca. but it's okay. He's a cutie. Yeah. I wanted to know about his life. Um, and he... <laughs> But it's one thing, like, from the girlfriend's standpoint, they were probably making out while they were filming the movie, you know? Yeah. So what's one more? For sure. What's for, one more kiss on the stage, on the on a national stage? And for publicity. Everybody watching. They're doing it right. They, Addison's PR mm -hmm. team is doing it right. People go, oh, she's doing stuff for public. No, duh. She's trying to be a motherfucking star, and she is. And it was, like, a makeout. It wasn't a peck. It wasn't a kiss. Like, they were... It lasted longer than I thought, almost uncomfortably long. It was. The way that she pulled away and then goes back to time. It was kind of uncomfortable, but I enjoyed like it. They were moving at a high speed. They were making out more than Madison. I know. I mean, and Madeline, Madeline and, Chase, and yeah. Chase were. Yeah. Madeline Chase, so cute. Very you know, cute. Madeline was like, shut up. And then she kissed Ugh. him and I loved it. But can you imagine going into that? You know. So nervous. You know you got to get up there and kiss. You're aware of that moment. You think they you probably planned the kiss? For sure. God, I'd be so nervous. Like, I'd probably have the worst kiss of my life up there. Definitely. You know? Like, you know I, I have a fear just, of being filmed. Yeah, exactly. Kissing. Like, you're just... <laughs> and they've kissed on camera endless times while filming. But it's this is a totally different scenario because, one, they're themselves. It's not like they're playing their character. But it's like... I just can't imagine. I... I'm shocked that they didn't like bump foreheads or something, you know, like where you just miss and you're like, ah, <laughs> you got to be a pro. And they are obviously yeah, they probably practice. I think I have maybe can count. I have maybe one picture, one picture of me kissing a picture, a picture of me and Hank kissing like a selfie, like, or a, like a selfie. A, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just one. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I can't like, I, I, if, for some I reason couple. I'm, I don't have a lot, but I have a, a couple. I don't like my nose side profile. Mm, yeah. So that's where. It's jarring. Yeah. Like it's a jar. Mine, also, I know. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Not I'm saying when you take that selfie of you kissing, like in the moment you're like, oh, like 
that was so cute. This picture is going to be so cute. And then you look at the picture and you're like, who are these monsters? <laughs> Your noses are all smushed together. No, it looks but you crazy. look awful. Like, yeah. it's like, this isn't cute at all. Your faces are squished. That's what I'm saying. Like, That's your why. lips look weird. Like, I've done that the amount of times where, like, I've had that picture. I- I'm deleted of. I Normally, I delete them because I'm like, it looks terrible. But in the moment, you're like, oh, cute smooch kiss you look at it you're like that's just not cute at all no so i applaud these people for getting up there and making out in front of everybody people telling them oh that kiss looked weird that you're no, about you, how good Madeline you do you looked. oh the the whole cast of outer banks let me tell you let all of them madison madeline yeah. chase jonathan rudy rudy looks so absolute good. fucking stunners chase Jonathan's outfit, I think, was my favorite yeah. out of the guys. I think that his yeah. outfit was no. They awesome. bought. They looked really, really good. I um, I I don't know if I loved Chase's. It was a, like a little too like Harry Styles like for me. I agree. you know like I get what he was trying to do, but I also think it's because he just his hair is darker now too, mm-hmm. and I was like, mm, this feels. I liked that him and Madeline were both wearing red. Yes, yes. And that was nice. I did. I mean, Madeline and Madison looked unreal. They, Those so two hot. know how to fucking work a red carpet. Yeah. Madison's confidence, I look at her Instagram and I get confident based off of her confidence. Yeah, yeah. Like she just owns who she is and has her own style yeah. and I, she just looks great. And I mean, and Madeline is... You know, those pictures were, she's like a Barbie. She's just yeah, she flawless. unbelievable. It's the Un- whole cast. I can't wait Un- for season two. Unbelievable. I can't believe I wasn't up there with them. <laughs> <laughs> we're so close to season two. We're like, I feel like we're just, we're going to get that premiere date soon. Here's so the thing. I'm obviously like, I'm, I'm so excited for it. And I'm going to spend my entire, when the day it comes out. What if it's not good? No, it's going to be great. That, that's not the question okay. here. I'm going, when what, this comes out, what whatever day it comes out. Oh, it's going to come out on a Friday, right? I'm going to base my entire day off of that. I'm going to put my phone yeah. down. I'm going to spend that entire 10 hours watching up. We can do this together. But I'm, in the back of my head, going to be very jealous that I am not in it. It's, <laughs> it's something that's going to be in the back of my head. I'm going to be like, I was told that I was talked about, and, the, and yeah. I, the fact that I didn't make it, it hurts. And people are still thinking, oh, I think Rhea's going to pop in. I'm not. I'm fucking not in it. I'm not in it, I can promise you. <laughs> It's not like a Trent thing where I'm hiding no. it. I wish I was. No. It's just not the case. Nope. But still super, super excited for that. Yeah. Yeah. But all in all, like, this is this is what we're saying about the MTV. These, specifically these movie and TV awards, you got to have moments like that. It's just how you get people talking. Like, you got to have an, you gotta have Addison Rae. Some people Ray. wait in a lifetime yep. for a moment like And this. it just did make me want to watch the best like there's been some good best kisses i can't wait for he's all that the movie (laughs) sue me i'm not gonna lie i've been excited about that for that movie oh i always have been but i'm even more excited now as soon as i found out tanner was involved (laughs) oh you sly dog granny no i she's all she's all that is so iconic that you have to watch he's all that yeah just even if it's terrible like just to know what what happens I mean, you know what happens, but just to watch it. It's probably going to be brutal, but awesome at the same time. Yeah. Jed talks, everybody. He finally speaks about 500 months late. Yep. He is dropping his podcast, Jed Talks, but unfortunately, we're getting nothing from him. We are not getting anything about ABC or The Bachelor or anything like that because he was going to get sued. Yeah. And and I will say, like, I don't think anyone's did has done more promo for Jed Talks than we have. <laughs> We're like, we hate Jed Talks. Like, I bet you so many. I know. I bet so many of our listeners are like, "Wow, Jed has a podcast. Never knew." Yeah, because we're too, we're heavy promoting. I feel Fuck. like um, Jed Talks. But I hate that you pointed that out. It makes me want to stop talking. No, about I know, it. but it's it. It is something to talk about because it was such a big thing three months ago. Like in February, it was like he's releasing this podcast. He's gonna tell all. He's telling his side of the story, the whole thing, the promo. And we made a joke about it, like kind of in our Cutting Sense group chat of being like, today is February 18th, still no Jed Talks. <laughs> today is March 12th, still no Jed Talks. <laughs> April 15th, still no Jed Talks. <laughs> but here we are. It is May 18th. We do have Jed Talks. He started the podcast and he basically said that um, he was going to get sued. He was going to get hardcore sued if he did the show that he wanted to do so now jed talks is just like 
Jed Talks. I, it's it's his podcast. I believe he had another um, musician on the on the first episode, but he made the decision of like, hey, we'll go on with the show, not talk about it, not get sued, um, and be able to actually do the show that he that he wanted to do instead of saying everything and then straight up getting sued and like being in court for years. So I, I understand it, and I bet you ABC came down hard on him. I refuse to listen to a single episode of this podcast. I said that even before when I thought there was going to be some yeah. some things in there about the Bachelor franchise. I refuse to listen to a single Jed talk. So you can listen. You can let me know. I listened to the said. beginning. Oh, my. Fuck you, Fran. Why are you how listening did to you Jed talk? How do you think I just told everyone what he said? No, I had no. to listen. I would take back my fuck you. That was yeah. inappropriate. <laughs> it was just I wanted to let one fly today. And that <laughs> felt appropriate. And I, and I look, I wanted to. No, I, I wanted it. to know his explanation on why it's been months. <laughs> For sure. Here's the thing. I think obviously he was going to get sued. He shouldn't. He should have known that was coming. I think you'd have to be an idiot to not realize that ABC was going to come find your ass when yeah. you're like, we're going to be dropping some things. Yeah. I wonder how much it is though. You know, does he have a rich friend that can that can pay for the bills if he gets no. sued and let some things go? I also don't think we're going to find out anything that interesting if he were to tell shit that was happening behind I the scenes. Things know that we don't so know. So bad though. I know, but re- but really, like, what don't we know? What what can't people I mean, assume I don't think it in would their be, brains? Right. I don't think it would be anything that shocking. But it's just a different level of actually hearing it come out of a contestant's mouth because that never happens. Because, like you said, you'll get sued. You'll get sued. It's unfortunate. One day somebody's going to fucking crack, though. I know one day yeah. somebody's going to take on and they're going to find a little avenue where they can sue ABC right back and fucking let it all fly. And listen, you know, we love ABC. We, You know, we love the franchise. But do we root for chaos? Do we root to find out some 100%. things? 100%. Definitely. Look, I, if, if Jed put out that episode the way he wanted to and then actually got sued by ABC, it would be unbelievable. Unbo- Just, Chef's kiss. I know. But that's that this is that's not what happened. That is not it's what boring. happened. Now we're getting Jed talks. And unfortunately, Boo. we kind of just had to like fill in the blanks. He, he, he kind of just had to be like, you guys can probably put two and two together. <laughs> that's an entire episode of Jed talks. <laughs> that was so mean. <laughs> Wedding bells for Ariana Grande. She married Dalton Gomez over the weekend at her house in Montecito. Looked like. I actually I don't know what it looked like. <laughs> I was gonna say it looked like it was nice, but we have we no saw idea. No pictures. They they went like full blown. I feel like military grade protection of this event. TMZ was posting that they were they did coverage so that like helicopters couldn't get anything from over the house. They had like sound systems that surrounded the house that were uh, blaring bird noises like natural bird noises out onto the street. So it just seemed like in, everyone in the neighborhood was just listening to some really loud birds. So you couldn't hear what was going on within the house, in the party. It seemed very, very small, not a lot of guests. I think they all said they didn't even really have much of a ceremony. And so I kind of feel like they were like, I do, I do. We're married. Party time. Yeah, exactly. Good for Ariana Grande. Good for Ariana Grande. I feel like it's got to be really fucking hard to go with th- sh- all the shit she's been through. She has yeah. gone through so much, a lot of trauma, you know, the whole the up and down public thing with Pete Davidson. She lost Mac Miller. Yeah. Very upsetting things. Yeah. It's got to be hard for anybody to jump into another relationship after stuff like that happens. Mm-hmm. But she does it. And I think that's great. And she could see that and she loves him and she feels happy with him. And that's awesome. So I'm happy for Ariana Grande. And it seems like, you know, we don't get much from those two. They live a very private life. Mm-hmm. It seems like so good for them. I, I, what do I think? It's too soon, of course. Yeah. I think I think every celebrity couple who runs down the aisle immediately after getting engaged, it's far too soon. But that's what they're going to do. Yeah. It does help, like, just... Rest- it's like a little re- you restore your faith and love a little bit because she's such a hopeless romantic it seems like it's like if she can fully give her heart to another person again it's amazing that's a it's a skill like mm-hmm. it's incredible that she's not super jaded from from uh the things that she's gone through and i do think it's kind of like the opposite of 
what happened with Demi Lovato, right? It was like you meet your significant other, it's quarantine, you're with each other every day, living with each other, things have accelerated at an unbelievable pace, you get engaged, it's like, holy shit, we're getting married. I've never even like been to a restaurant with this person. <laughs> and in Demi Lovato's case, backfired. Awful, terrible idea. Should not have happened. In Ariana Grande's case, seems like it was the best thing ever. They got to, she didn't have to worry about being out, touring, music, anything. She could just chill and be at home and be with Dalton and, and do their thing and, um, and actually, actually get married. Like there's one thing about there's one thing getting engaged, but like married, like she is a wife now. It's it's crazy to me, and maybe it's just because all of these. I don't know. Maybe it's just because these actresses and actors are, you grow up with them, and they're like around my age, and we're all in that kind of same group. So I'm like, damn, these people are married. They got they got husbands. It's like, I still I'm I just. But I feel that way also about my friends that are like engaged. I'm like, damn. <laughs> I feel like if I was a super famous celebrity, and I'm gonna ask you the same thing, mm-hmm. do you think you'd you'd go through like a few marriages pretty young? I feel like I would. Like I feel like I'm the type. You absolutely would. I feel like I would just like meet somebody and be like, we're getting married next week. Yeah. Like within a week maybe. Like I'm t- I'm telling these people that they're heading down the aisle way too fast. They got engaged in the summer. They're getting married now. I'd probably meet somebody and marry them within the same week if just for fun if I'm if I'm like this big celebrity yeah I I think I think if it was me I probably wouldn't get married at all (laughs) you know that makes sense too definitely like which is sad but I just kind of think like I either would never get married at all or get married when I was like 50 you know? Yeah, I was thinking get, never get married at all or get married a, a million bunch of times. times. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Which could go either. It's almost like a would you rather. Would you rather yeah. not get married at all or would you rather get married? And you're having fun every marriage. It's like yeah. the best time ever every time you do it. Yeah, exactly. And this, and there's some people where it's like you can tell they need another famous person as their partner in a relationship. It's That's just... They need someone who really understands it or wants to be a part of everything. For someone like Ariana Grande, I feel like it's the perfect person for her to have someone that's like in LA and knows the scene, but is not famous. Like is not a, is not a musician or he's not in the industry, does something else so that it can still kind of bring her back down to earth a little bit. It's good. Yeah. Good for them. I'm happy for them. I can't wait. I hope we see pictures eventually. Like, I would really love to see what Ariana Grande wore on her wedding day. Me too. But I, I pony, know. yes or no? No. No. I, I, I'm leaning towards no as well. I don't think she did a high pony. I feel like I feel she like went she, natural. Her hair probably uh, got a lot of health restored during the true. quarantine from not having to wear an, a ponytail all the time. That's true. So maybe it's That's doing true. better natural. We actually really have no idea what her hair looks like now. No, no but, idea. Um, yeah, I, I would take that bet also. So hopefully we'll see eventually, maybe. Do you ever wish that, you know, your dad maybe dressed a little bit better? Like you thought like, you see him get dressed and you're like, oh, dad, that shirt doesn't fit you. It's too long. It's not flattering. Like it, it's baggy. They don't really know sometimes how to dress themselves. They, they need a little help. I guess so. I wouldn't say that about my dad, but maybe My dad's yours. also super stylish as well, but... Uh, <laughs> but but um, but there I'm. There are a lot of dads men in out general. There. And I men feel in general. Like. And you work in an office yes. with a bunch of guys. You look at them. You're like, right. what are you wearing? We're talking about Father's Day because Father's Day is coming up. But if you also just have a man in your life that you're like, maybe you could wear t-shirts that are a little bit more fitting. Because I also think that there's a battle with t-shirts for men. Like you get them, they're they're either too tight and they're short, or they're too long and like baggy. There's no. There isn't a good shirt that fits you, maybe your shoulders, but also like doesn't go too long. But Cuts Clothing has really created like the best silhouette for a man for like t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, sweatshirts. And if you want to get your dad some, like I said, Father's Day is coming up. And Cuts combines comfort and class with their premium men's apparel. Uh, they have these universally flattering designs. The The material is so soft. It's their buttery soft Pika Pro Tri-Blend Tees. 
that's a tongue twister, but for sure, very, I'm proud of you for that one. Yes, very, very great. And their cozy Hyperloop French Terry fabric hoodies, they're great. And I will say, I got some even for myself because, like, do you ever feel like when the when there's men's products, you're like, well, I want to try this. <laughs> like, for sure, I can't try this. So uh, I have a sweatshirt and a long sleeve shirt with a hood as well. So comfortable. The material is so soft. And on top of that, you know, Joe got got some as well. They look great on him. They're great t-shirts. Got a nice black t-shirt, slimming, attractive. It's fantastic. So if you're looking to treat the man in your life, whether it's, you know, your dad for Father's Day, boyfriend, friend, whatever it is, this Father's Day you can give dad the gift of something that he'll both feel good and look great in anytime with Cuts Clothing. Plus, you'll get 15% off your first order by going to CutsClothing.com slash chicks. That's CutsClothing.com dot com slash chicks for 15 percent off the only shirt worth wearing i don't want to get everyone too excited but i think that the jones brothers are going back on tour um a tweet went viral which was then used in a tiktok of a date for a jones brothers remember this tour would be with Kelsey Ballerini. I think the date was like for somewhere in october and tickets were going on sale like may 27th and this was up and then the tweet went up and then Ticketmaster took it down. So like, you can't find it anymore. It's not up anymore. But it does seem like maybe that was the push that they needed to come out and say like, ooh, people are on to us. We better start letting people know. So Jonas Brothers on their Instagram posted a reel of them. There's no sound. They're FaceTiming Kelsey Ballerini. You know, says Kelsey B. And they're standing in front of an empty stadium outdoor arena whatever you want to call it they're going on tour with kelsey ballerini chills i the remember this tour remember this i love it what does it mean i don't know i have chills when you say you think that. they have a new I'm album think- called remember this i hope either th- either that we gotta get the new album before the tour all of the all of them have been on the show I know. That's cool. All oh, chasing yeah. the office guests on the Remember This tour, oh, hopefully. Oh, I can't wait to go. I think it's Remember This. It's either going to be a new album or a Remember This. It's just all their hits. <laughs> <laughs> like, Remember This one? Hey, Remember This one? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Remember This one? <laughs> yeah. That's actually very That would be fucking funny. awesome. Yeah. Holy fuck. But they yeah. already do. They already play a lot of their hits at the they show. They do. And also, they've just... They've been sitting on new music for so long, I feel like. I'm like, come on. So maybe they give it to us this summer and then the tour starts in the fall would would be my guess but boy am i already nervous about locking down tickets for this friend i can promise you we will be able to get tickets well of of course but i i'm also you know i gotta make sure i got i gotta get my tickets with my jonas friends i gotta make sure we go i got you, you know i got a, a multiple sh- dates i have to lock you have in. to lock in a show with me Yes, multiple dates okay. need to be locked in. Uh, maybe they're gonna maybe they're gonna because. go back to Penn State. Oh, I mean, if we're going to Penn State, if they're going to Penn State, I, I thought actually, let's run it back. <laughs> we have to run it back. We have to run it back. We're running it back. To be completely honest, we are running I, it back. That thought just popped in, into my brain. I didn't even think of that as a possibility. And now, if they don't go back to Penn State, I'm gonna be so pissed. Do you think they wouldn't? That's their favorite place in the world. No, I. <laughs> I think they had so much fun. I'd be shocked if they didn't go back to. No, Penn. we're gonna. Let me tell you. I this. also think they need to have a B stage again. I don't want to get into too much into set development for them, <laughs> stage development. But if they they need to have, I love the front stage and the B stage that they did for the Happiness Begins tour. If it's not the same thing something kind of similar i thought that was a very cool setup it was so cool because the people who were in the front stage they got to experience Mm -hmm. it people near the b stage got to experience it i agree with the set development on that part yeah but we must run it back to penn state oh my god we will go even i god now oh the end of things are happening again we got concerts. Do you know how hard? We may lose our lives if we go to Penn State I for the Jonas Brothers again. Well, I think I might cry. Like if I if I mean if, we already cried a bunch of times. No, I know, but I think I'll cry again. Of course. If no, no, I'm I'm not even saying afterwards. I'm saying like if when the tour dates are released and Penn State is listed on there, like Wait, but tears when, of when joy. Naturally. To, when yeah. they went to Penn State. Oh, you're saying like cuz if they play in Pennsylvania, I feel like they're going to be there. Like go after that type of thing talking about no chance. but i'm i'm no no no. i'm saying playing i mean they played at Penn yeah, state that's what i'm saying but i thought you were more talking about like are they gonna go to champs after that type of thing 
I'm well, talking about yeah, both. Both. If they play at Penn State, they will go to Champs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I don't. I'm. Yeah. I'm. It's combined. I don't think that there's. I don't think they're going to Penn State and then not going. To yeah. Champs. I don't think you go to Penn State without going to cha- Champs. Right. I also after. think they're not going to go to Champs if they don't play Penn State. That's right. what I was thinking. They're not yeah, just going yeah, to yeah. Champs for no reason. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think they would have to be in the area, which means they would probably have to have a show at Penn, at Penn State. State. Crossing our fingers. Oh, man. I really, really hope so. And I think like. They got to make a full announcement too, uh, relatively soon. If that Ticketmaster thing was right, if tickets go on sale on May twenty seventh, I gotta, I could get ready. That's next week. What are you getting ready for? Make to sure your buy laptop's tickets. charged. I know, but you what? Just make sure your laptop's charged. I know. You gotta, <laughs> gotta get the numbers right. Gotta make sure your, your credit card's memorized. Yeah. Oh, duh. Duh. <laughs> yeah, we all have it. I was about to recite it, and then I thought, idiot. That would not be smart. <laughs> definitely, nope. definitely don't do that. Harry Styles I, was when, when something went wrong, right? With the tickets? Um, On Ticketmaster? Cor- yeah. I mean, yes, also Justin Bieber. Yeah, yeah. But Justin Bieber's tour got totally, like, everyone got their money back, and then you have to buy tickets again for the new tour. Harry Styles, thankfully, was just rescheduled. So no, no, I have I was tickets talking to about that when we in October. Went and you were trying to get the tickets and then like you weren't able to you were only able to get like Oh, that was also the Jonas yeah. Brothers. Oh no, that was Harry no, no, that was, was Harry Styles. When we went to LA and it was like, Harry Styles in get, LA. Like, a certain, yeah. It was Harry Styles in LA and that, well, that was, was very his, like, stressful. That, yeah, well that was his one show. That only, was exactly like, that was like if you were one night at the forum. Right. If you were trying to buy tickets to uh Loverfest for Taylor Swift, like that was also a nightmare because it was just Four pla- like it was n- right in not so a lot of places. Saddle up, I'm ready. I'm ready. I hope everyone's ready. To I hope go. the Joe Bros are ready for us. To be How back many in shows am I going to go to? We so went many. to like we went to six happiness. I'd argue stops. by the last one, I c- couldn't go to another. Remember the last one that we did? It was like, oh no, I have yeah. to get home. <laughs> Madison Square Garden. I did Madison Square Garden, Barclays, Penn State, Do you Denver. The first one that you went to. The secret the show. The secret show. And Philly. Duh. Philly was the first one. So you six. went to six. <laughs> I did four out of those six yeah. with you. Yeah. Philly, you weren't with me. And Barclays, you weren't with no. me. Yeah. We went to four Jonas Brothers shows together mm-hmm. in 2019. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's fucking sick in the head. What is wrong That's with amazing. us? amazing. Let's go for five. Just, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm going to get even. Just because I also feel like people are going to be so excited to go back to concerts that for like. Sure. No matter, what, no matter what the concert is. That's what I'm saying. I, I couldn't tell if this was going to be a chiller experience. Like, oh, you know, it's not their big we're back tour. It's like the second tour. Will there be as much demand? Then I was like, I'm looking at going to concerts of people that I'm not even really like that much of a fan of just because I want to go to a concert. Yeah, I think everybody's going to be going to concerts. Yeah. We're going to see fucking 50-year-old men at the Jonas Brothers concert. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just to get out. Just, just to get feel out. something. Just to get away from their wives. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are back for another game of Beat Re and Fran. This is game seven. We got Emily and Bree with us. Emily and Bree, would you guys consider yourselves pop culture experts? I'd say so. We'll see how it goes. Confident in us. <laughs> Let's get some more confidence out of you, ladies. I want to hear a firm yes. This is pop culture trivia, and it's coming down to the wire. We've only been beaten one time, and I feel like we need some yeah. other people to beat us. I don't. <laughs> but at the same time, I want to. I want to see what these people got. I want to see what Emily and Bree I, bring to I the table. Hate that you're saying this right now because the last <laughs> time we did this is when we lost. I'm not saying it in a negative way. No, I know, but we did the same thing. Remember, we were like, ooh, like, you know, if we lose, it won't be that bad. And then we lost. I'm just trying <laughs> to motivate Emily and Bree for them to have a good showing okay. because we've been kicking asses left and right. And that's that. Now, okay. which area each do you guys think you um, specialize in? You know, Excelling. some people say Bravo. Some people say the Kardashians. What is it for you guys? I feel like we're pretty split on Bravo. I'm more like housewife. She's in Summer House. She's like Southern Charm, Dancing with the Stars. So I feel like we're going to balance each other out pretty well. Yeah. I like it. We'll see. But if it's old movies, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to it. All right. Noah is going to start off by naming a movie 
We will all guess the Rotten Tomatoes score. You guys each um, have your own guess. And whoever is closest to the actual score will determine which, which team goes first. Um, there are 15 total questions. Whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. And if um, one team was to get a question wrong, the other team has the opportunity to steal and get the point. So, Noah, what is our movie? Today's movie is The Notebook. Mm. Beautiful film. Let's close our laptops, by the way. Oh, so true. You guys go first. Emily, take a shot. I'm going to go with 71. All right, I'm going to go higher. I'm going to go with 82. 93. 68. 53. What? What? Well, we yes. won, but what? Fran, yes, closest, but The Notebook 53. has a 53? Really? Does. Wow. What did I say? You said 60 something. Yeah, you but said wait, 68. Uh, Emily, what did you say? She said 70, said right? 71. 71. Oh, seven, oh I, okay, so I went the lowest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, 50. Wow, okay, all right. Yeah. I'm shocked by that. I'm not shocked. It's fucking Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Of course they would give that type of score. I don't know why we act like we're shocked every time. We're not shocked. I know. hate them. Every time it's just like, <laughs> what? And then why are we still shocked? Okay. All right, Noah, we are ready. Okay. Question number one. Shout out Caitlin from Clifton Park. Mm. New Jersey? I don't know. I don't know where that is. I think it's New Jersey. Okay. I think so. Yeah. All right. What year was the final season of Friends aired? Oh, I know this. You do? Oh, wait. I thought I did pretty confidently. I was going to say... so just had their... I was going to say 2011. 1990. That would be way too soon, right? Did Friends go on until 2011? There's no way. No. I'm trying to do the math in my head. 2003? 2006? I don't know. Final answer. I have no idea. I have... Yeah, to the final answer, 2006. Wrong. <laughs> okay, see you guys now. I think it might be Bree, what was your what was your feeling? Because I have a number in my head. I was thinking like 03. That's exactly what I thought. So. Okay. 2003. Final answer. Also incorrect, but very close. It's 2004. Mm. Oh... See, I just would have never said 2004. <laughs> 2004 would have never been no the one that I said. Okay, why did I 2011? 2011 what, that was, a was crazy like, fucking what answer. Year did, <laughs> what year did it start? Uh, 1997. 1990, 1994. It started um, 1994. So 10. 1994. Ten I have no idea. The see, that's where I was forgetting. I was trying. I was on like. From 2004 to 2012. I was trying to like. do the math on when it started, but then I forgot Matthew what Perry year it started. Look a lot better, <laughs> I know. True. Damn, ricochet shot to Matthew Perry. Yeah, Matthew Noah. Perry. He's having a tough week. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, okay. All right. Okay, this one is to Bree and Emily now. Shout out Chloe from Indiana. Which one of these actors never appeared in a Scream movie? A. Kristen Bell. B. Patrick Dempsey. C. Paris Hilton. D. Jada Pinkett Smith. What do you think, Bri? I'm thinking C or D. Can you say them one more time? Yeah. A. Kristen Bell. B. Patrick Dempsey. C. Paris Hilton. D. Jada Pinkett Smith. A screen what Patrick, movie. What was Patrick Dempsey? Ten seconds. I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's go with let's go with C. C. Final. Okay. Yeah. Final answer. Correct. Paris <laughs> Hilton. Yes. I for some I reason said, was thinking scary movie instead of scream. Mm. <laughs> and I would have never said Paris Hilton in yeah, that yeah, case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yep. I understand. Where, I understand the thought process there. <laughs> yes. Yep. Okay. This is Sarah and Fran, mm-hmm. who are down one nothing. Shout out Dana from Columbus, Ohio. Selena Gomez appeared in what Jonas Brothers music video? A. This is me. B. SOS. 
C, burning up. D, year 3000. I can't believe you wrote this down. It's a question, and I can't believe you made it a multiple choice. I keep burning up. I cannot believe you made that a multiple choice question. I can't believe you made that a multiple choice question. (laughs) That's crazy. First of all, Dana Dana made it a multiple choice. I know, but like you gotta you gotta go in with a professional edit. But (laughs) here we go again. Like if it okay, Brie and Emily, would you have gotten that? It was D, right? It's C burning up. Uh, so oh, no. So oh yeah, no, I would not have done that. It's all luck of the draw. If they had gotten it. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. You know, but I, I think like, it you're was, an expert in it. Some yeah. they're an expert. Yeah, in some right. Areas. I all think right. it was just because it was. It's just giving me a multiple right. choice Jonas Brothers question felt, is wild. <laughs> Noah, we know how. I'm going to do some hard Jonas Brothers questions, and you're going to get them wrong now. Noah, that's what I'm going to do. It's because we saw how Fran feels when people don't oh, understand. That's true. Yep. that's true. That she knows yeah, everything yeah. about the Jonas. I right don't before know. This I podcast, certainly don't know everything. Not about everything, them. but m- most things. Like right before this podcast, she was a little salty that people thought she didn't know something yeah. about the Jonas Brothers. So I think that's where the see she felt out the little insulted. final answer. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm like mediating and sometimes I think I make it worse. (laughs) Okay. This question is now to Brie and Emily. Mm -hmm. Tied up one. Okay. Shout out Emily from Waterloo, Ontario. Oh, cool. Waterloo. Yep. Which of the following artists has not lent one of their songs to a TV show as a theme song? A, Hilary Duff. B, Jesse McCartney. C. Gavin DeGraw. D. Carol King. It's definitely not C. It's not A. What was B and D? B was Jesse McCartney and D was Carol King. Uh, Brie, what are you thinking? I'm thinking I'm, it's B. You like Jesse McCartney, yeah. Okay, let's go with yeah. B. Correct. Yes. <laughs> Carol King, Gilmore Girls. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yep. <laughs> okay. Bree and Emily are up 2 1. Shout out Grace from Illinois. Which celeb did not make a cameo on Sweet Life of Zach and Cody? A. Joey King. B. Caden Smith. C. Chris Brown. D. Noah Cyrus. Who the fuck is Caden Smith? Did you mean Jaden Smith? Is that a typo? Jaden Smith? <laughs> Did you just say Caden <laughs> Smith? <laughs> no, that didn't just happen. Oh no. Jaden Smith. <laughs> okay. So which one of those celebrities? Which ones did not appear did not on Sweet appear Life? Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Yes. Yep. Okay, so Joey King was definitely on Sweet Life of Zack and Cody because she was on like every younger thing ever. Um, or does that mean no, no, no? She jo- wasn't on Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Joey King was on. Chris Sweet Brown. Life. Chris, that's the one I'm stuck on because Jaden Smith, I think, was on Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. What was the last two? Chris Brown and Noah Cyrus. I mean, Noah Cyrus was on Hannah Montana, but was Noah Cyrus on Sweet Life? Ten seconds. What? Here's the thing, I can't remember. An episode of Chris Brown on Sweet Life, but for some reason. All right, need an answer. I'm giving this one to you. I'm going to I'm gonna say Chris Brown. Final answer. Yeah. Incorrect. Fuck. Okay, Brie and Emily, it's to you. Okay. It's not A and it's not Chris Brown. He was definitely on it. I feel like, what do you think? I feel like no Cyrus. I think so too. I think that's yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, Noah Cyrus. Final answer. Correct. It's Noah Cyrus. I didn't use my wits there. I did not. You didn't trust your gut. You literally said, "I feel like Chris Brown was on it," and then you picked Chris. <laughs> and Brown. then I picked Chris Brown. Yeah, I don't that was stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It was an iconic episode. Stupid. Sure. Stupid. Uh-huh. What am I thinking? And I really remember, like, yeah. Okay. All right. We're up. Moving on. All right. <laughs> Brie and Emily are up 3-1. Yep. And this question is to them. Shout out Mariana from Boston. Mm. What year was the iconic Paris Hilton, Britney Spears, and Lindsay Lohan picture in the car taken? A, 2002. B, 2008. C, 2006. D, 1999. Too many multiple choice questions. 
Uh, uh, <laughs> well, I remember it was in the documentary. Uh, I didn't watch that, so uh, I don't know why. 2006 is just kind of sticking that, with me. Yeah, I feel like the 99's an outlier. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know. Let's go 2006. 2006. Correct. 2006. Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> They're taking the lead. 4-1 now. We will. We shall come back. I don't know how that gets multiple choice, but the friends question doesn't get multiple choice. I know. Just continue. Okay. Yep. Next question. Friend, we can't be so- sore losers. That's it's, I'm not being a sore loser, but I just sometimes, I think Noah's got to go through these questions a couple oh more times. Oh my God. <laughs> right, let's get on with the question. Let's I didn't hear you complaining question. last time when you won. Okay, this question is to Rhea and Fran. They're down 4-1. Shout out Dan and Mandy from Chicago. Oh, a couple questions. Yeah, a couple. A collab. Which of the following TV series has Michael B. Jordan not appeared in? A, The Wire. B, The Sopranos. C, House. D, Criminal Minds. It's gotta be The Sopranos, right? Definitely in the wire. Definitely in the wire. House Criminal Minds, The Sopranos. With The Sopranos being thrown in there makes me think Michael B. Jordan was in The Sopranos, which I just watched The Sopranos in quarantine, and I feel like he was. But now I'm like, we should go. I I think remember what was he possibly on? I think we should go House or Criminal Minds. Five seconds. And I think, I think Criminal Minds. I have no idea. Criminal yeah. Minds. I have no idea. Final answer. Criminal, D, minds, Criminal D. minds. Correct. Oh, thank God, <sighs> Jesus. He thank was God. on The Sopranos. For some reason, yeah. I can't remember what he did on The Sopranos, but I feel it like it was one of those things I, where I was like, he can't be on The Sopranos. Yes, and then like, I was like, I have a, second. I have a memory of watching in quarantine and being like, holy shit, Michael B. Jordan's on The Sopranos, and I don't re- like, and Tony I can't Sop- remember Tony what episode. Son, it was a uh, season one. Episode seven, Tony's son, Anthony, was having problems at school. I guess he was a kid at school. Season mm. one? Season See, one. I would have guessed later seasons, yeah. too. Yeah, he's like a child. In wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Real young. Okay. Four, two, Bree and Emily. And this question is to them now. Shout out Allie from Chicago. Olivia Rodrigo has a highly anticipated album, Sour, coming out. What are the names of the three singles that have been released already? Driver's Deja, license. Deja vu. Deja vu. Good for you. Is it good for you? I I don't know. This I, I listened to it yesterday. Okay, go with it. Good for you. All right, those are the three. Correct. Nice, Brie. <laughs> My that was cute. Thing. It was. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Five two. Brie and Emily. Shout out Olivia and Sarah from Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, another collab. Patrick Dempsey played the role of Derek Shepard on Grey's Anatomy. Which famous Hollywood actor was originally offered the role and turned it down? A. Rob Lowe. B. Robert Downey Jr. C. Hugh Jackman. D. Matthew McConaughey. Pretty sure it's Rob Lowe, no? It's not Matthew McConaughey, so we can get that out of there. And what were the other choices? Sorry. Robert Downey Jr. and... A, Rob Lowe, B, Robert Downey Jr., C, Hugh Jackman, D, Matthew McConaughey. I think it's Rob Lowe. I think it's Rob Lowe. We're going to go with A, Rob Lowe. Final answer. Correct. Nice. I was like, there's no way that Hugh Jackman or Robert Robert Downey Jr. or Matthew McConaughey were offered that. (laughs) And and Rob Lowe talks about that all the time, I think. Yeah. All right. Brie and Emily are up 5-3. This next question, I'm going to play a line from a movie, Mm -hmm. and you tell me what movie it's from. Do you know what really just kills me about this whole thing? It's the clothes that you're going to get. I mean, mm, you don't deserve them. You eat carbs, for Christ's sake. God. Is it Mean Girls, Bray? When she's like so. When she's like eating all those breakfast bars or whatever. I have this is the question we did not want. <laughs> I know. This is literally exactly what we didn't want. Um, 
I have no other guesses unless you do. I, I feel like it's uh, like Legally Blonde. I don't think it's Legally Blonde either. But I feel like it's gotta be like that kind of movie. You wanna go with Mean Girls? Yeah, let's just go with Mean Girls. Yeah, let's go with it. I don't think it's right, but. Incorrect. Yeah. The Devil Wears Prada. Final answer. Yeah. Correct. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Legally Blonde. Yes. Wow, I was absolutely so ready for I was so ready for it. I was so cocky. So ready for it. I didn't know that one. I've actually only seen The Devil Wears Prada like one time. Oh, great movie. Okay. Emily and Bria are up 5 4 now. And this question is to Rhea and Fran. What is the name of the comedy rap trio Andy Sandberg performed with on SNL? Why the fuck am Lonely I? Lonely Island. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wait, why am I blanking? It's Lonely Island. Lo- the Lonely Island. Correct. Final answer. Correct. Yeah. That just was about to. I was like, why am I blanking <laughs> I was on like, that? It like I didn't know me, what you were gonna no, say. No, it made me furious that I couldn't. I was like, why am I? I was and about to thought, name all the songs, and I was like, I what? know. And, I, and it popped in my head. And when you said that, I was like, holy shit, am I wrong? No, no, no. <laughs> I I just couldn't believe that I blanked out. I was like, wait a second, yes. what is it? Okay. Lonely Island. Lonely Island. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> tie ball game. We're all tied up, folks. Tie game. Let's go. Ooh. Okay. Game seven. Tied game. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you like this, that one? I did like that one. Yeah. I, oh, the game seven. Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. This question is to Bree and Emily. What? Shout out Molly. Oh, shout out Ashley for that uh, lonely island question. Oh, by the way. Shout out Ashley. And shout out Molly from Columbus, Ohio, from for this one. Columbus, stand yeah. up. A lot of multiple submissions today. What were the names of the twins in the parent trap? This one's not multiple choice. Um, I have no idea. Bree, do you have a guess? Ten seconds. I can't hear you, Bree, but I would can Oh do- yeah, you're, you're muted. Bree, I think you muted yourself. Uh, Morgan <laughs> and Time's up. Lindsay, I don't know. Wait, wait, we'll get like I Bree might have an answer and we can't <laughs> hear her, which would be terrible. <laughs> can you hear me now? Oh yes, yes you're back. Okay, okay. Alright, do you have an answer? I do not have an answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so it's to reinfrain that. Hallie yeah. and Annie. Oh, yes. Oh, Annie, for some reason, was escaping me. I was like, Hallie and Hallie and. Correct. But yes, you're correct, Hallie and Annie. That's impressive. Okay. I love that movie. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's. I was about to get really angry at myself on that, too, because in my head, I'm like, Hallie and. I'm like trying to p- picture mm-hmm. Natasha Richardson speak. Yep. Okay. Bri and Fran are up 6'5", mm. and this question is to them. We needed that big, question. Big swing. Th- this is big swing. for the game. <gasps> How many questions are left? Two. Oh. oh, my God. This is for the oh. game? Holy shit. Everyone buckle up. Shout okay. out Jordan from, I'm going to butcher this, Rancho Cucamonja, California. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Amazing. Okay. Okay. Which rom-com is not referenced in Jonas Brothers? what a man gotta do music video a say anything b grease c when harry met sally d risky business when harry met sally final answer c correct (laughs) i mean two joris brothers music video multiple choice yeah that's crazy yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, putting I understand putting one, putting two, two Jonas Brother multiple choice music video questions, a little out of control. <laughs> but you know what? That's okay. Um, really, like, we really do, close game. We should do the last one. Right? Yeah, let's, let's do the last yeah. one just yeah. to see. Okay, for, shout out Amy from purposes. Maryland. Yeah. NCS to Key. What type of bag did Alex bribe Chloe with to not tell anyone that he cheated on his girlfriend with Juliet? It's their question. Yes, to Emily and Bree. This one's all you, Em. What type of bag? Chanel. Incorrect. Was it a Birkenstock? I don't know. Um, I forget. Was I it Louis? A, I think it was a Chloe bag. No. 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 Chloe Hermes? wasn't a- asking for a Chloe bag. I think it. I think it's Birkin? Louis. I think it's Louis because I think they like made a joke about her getting her Louis. 
What was it? Is it Louis Vuitton? No. Oh, fuck. Celine. Oh, Celine. Celine. Yeah. It was a new C name. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Close. There we go. All right. Woo, nail biter. That, that was close. Was close. Holy that was a close shit. one. Thanks for the two Jonas Brothers questions. You know what? <laughs> The next Jonas Brothers question I give you is going to be the hardest question of all time. I can't wait for it. <laughs> Emily and Bree, thank you guys so much for playing. Thank you for taking the time out of work to run to your car. I love Amazing. that motivation. <laughs> Seriously. We won't tell on you. Don't worry. <laughs> Secret safe with us. <laughs> thank you guys so much for playing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. We love you guys. We love you yeah. too. We love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, everybody. Wake the fuck up because it's Wednesday and you better get your Friday energy in line. You got to get that energy going. You got to push through. It's the middle of the week. We're almost hump there. Day. Memorial Day. It's hump day. Hump day. <laughs> Stop it. Enough of that. <laughs> Memorial Day is coming up. We must push through with our energy and we are going to get our Friday energy from Cintron. Cintron is an awesome new energy drink that we love. This right here in front of me that I'm holding is the classic sugar free, which I think tastes amazing it doesn't have that she's got the crayon friend loves the crayon yeah and it doesn't have that you know aftertaste that sometimes an energy drink Mm -hmm. might have cintron does not have any of that it's giving you the energy you need while also tasting great um you know it's got premium ingredients it's long lasting energy and a vitamin b complex without the junk crash all those things unnecessary that come with some energy drinks. So if you want to try Cintron, go to CintronWorld.com, use code CHICKS20, and you will get 20% off plus free shipping on your Cintron. Guys, give it a shot. Cintron tastes really good, gives you the energy you need. Like we said, we can't rave about it enough. Uh, go get it. And there's also other things besides the, uh, the just the energy drinks. They got revitalizing shots. They got bo- premium bottled water. So you can check all that out. Go to CintronWorld.com, use code CHICKS20, and get your 20% off. All right, everyone. We are here with a special guest, Dolores Catania from Real Housewives of New Jersey. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. We're so excited to talk to you. We um, have loved this season of the show. I'm sad, though, because I did not realize that it was like a shorter season. Like I watched last week and was like, wait, this is the finale. It's over. I, I, I was sad. Like, But you guys, did you film a shorter season? It was only 13 episodes. Did we film a show? You got so you the shit. That, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes, of course. Go ahead. The shit that you did not see could make a whole nother season. So they kind of, I mean, I don't know. It's there. It's always, it's not our decision. It's up to that's That's behind the scenes decision. We don't have any say of how many episodes we get to have. I'm a lot of proud. There was so much content. So I'm very proud of what we were able to do with just us. Yeah. Right? It was during COVID. So if you strip down everything, there was no European trips. There was no big parties where a lot of crap happens. There wasn't a lot going on. It was just us raw. And you could have got another 20 episodes. Trust me. You don't know what you missed. <laughs> and trust me, we wish we got it. And I kind of <laughs> want to know what we missed. But you have, yeah. to, you have to ask for like a behind like a lost episodes or something because they did that once before and it was great. Mm hmm. What's it like when the season wraps up now, right? Is it a relief when you're like, oh, the finale has aired, we could take a breather, and then we're going to start filming again? There's not much of a breather to take. Um, the, once the episode airs, okay, so the finale's over, and there's a lot of tension. I'm going to be straight up. Yeah. There's a lot of tension after everybody watches the episode. So you live it, and then you take a break when you're done filming before it's edited, right? Yeah. Because they don't edit it during. They edit it after. And then you have to relive everything and the phone calls start coming in. And you either hate each other or you resolve it. But I'm here with my dad. <laughs> here. Oh, hello, lady. Hello. hello. I'm so dragging sweet. him all around with me today. That's amazing. Well, so then you if you guys just finished... Um, who were you having those phone calls with? Like, how's your relationship with Joe Gorga right now? Because I know that there was definitely some tension with you guys. So my tension wasn't with Joe Gorga. Like, yeah, okay. So, so I understand. Let your hair down. Let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah, take the earrings out. Let it fly. <laughs> it was just it's too heavy. It's hurting me. I put my extensions back in after Yellowstone. I wanted to look like a girl again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the whole thing with Joe Gorga was. I can handle that kind of, I can handle him. And I know where he's coming from. 
And I'm, I'm at a different place in my life. Like I don't get combative with people. Like he, he kind of met, it wasn't all wrong. He doesn't have a good delivery. Yeah. A lot of people don't. I know I can talk to anybody. I could talk to somebody who talks like that and I could talk to a politician. I mean, there's nothing that I, I mean, you have to take it from where it comes, right? So he was just, we were going back bantering. What pissed me off the most was my friends talking behind my back before I got there. So that's what made me mad because that's not what you do. You don't talk about, okay, I'm going to talk like Soprano now. You don't <laughs> talk about our business in mixed company. Sorry about that, but it had to come out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I mean, I fucking love it. But at the same time, you guys are on the show, right? So you know, in some capacity, people are going to be talking about you behind your back that are on the show, right? Right, but right, but it. I'm only speaking for, for Jersey. It is really authentic. It is not scripted. Nobody's trying to look better than they are or less than they are or try to make... There's no errors put on with us. I don't care if we're filming or not. You were talking behind my back at a party with other people and you don't do that. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't care. And and personal too, right? Like, you know, yeah, your well, relationships. Yeah, I mean, your friends are taking yeah. bets on if you're like, what's going on in your relationship? Yeah, I wanted to smash everybody's face. Like, I was <laughs> so mad. But um, so the thing with that is, and again, you want to do that when you guys are in a house behind closed doors with Nomics Company, here's the thing. You don't know who's listening. You don't know who those people are around you drinking their drink, listening. My friends' conversations on and off camera are always the people it's it's worth eavesdropping to because <laughs> it's like not even human, the, some of this stuff we talk Let about. Let me tell it. you, if I was standing around, I'd probably be like, what are they talking about <laughs> over there? <laughs> I'd be listening to your friends' conversations. So, <clears throat> you know, like we're, we're worth listening to as you see from the party in the beginning. Yeah. From Jackie's party. Yep. How did you find out what was said? Somebody overheard it. Right. So now they're talking about my relationship with David and I don't want to get back to him through other people. He's delivered a lot of babies. A lot of people love David. You don't know him or get to know him that well. Not everybody's works great on camera. He's getting used to it, but, um, don't let it get back to David that my friends are talking behind my back and his. Yeah, yeah. No, he don't care. I'm more principled than him. Like, he don't give a shit. Like, he's like, yeah, uh, what else? <laughs> I don't want him to be mad at my friends. I never want to drag a guy into my issues. Yeah. But it was more of a principled thing with me. Yeah, so. I definitely understand that. And do you think that... Like, do you think you're getting kind of tired of having the same conversation with your friends too? Like, I just feel like for the last couple seasons now, it's been very much like, why isn't David committing? And sh should, like, everyone loves you with Frank. So it's just a weird, like, is it kind of like, I'm kind of wish we weren't talking about this anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, here's the thing. They're, they're like, instead of just sitting down and trying to understand it and seeing it from my place, I know what I'm doing. I've gotten very far in life on my own. I have my ex-husband. I have my boyfriend. If you come to my house on a holiday, you'll see a lot of people I dated. They come back. I know what I'm doing. Trust me. <laughs> I and love hearing your dad laugh at what you're saying. It's <laughs> <laughs> cracking me up. <laughs> like it's every, a great you, soundtrack. It's like every time you hit a good point, I just hear your dad being like, yep, <laughs> those, those ex-boyfriends are crawling back. <laughs> they're, they're all there. I mean, you know. I know what I'm doing. I love so, it. I know what I'm doing in my life. So don't worry about it, guys. I, I got this. You're all married. Seems like a little bit more dependent on your husbands than I'd like to be. I lived a different life. I've been divorced since I'm 28 years old. I don't even know if either one of you are even that age. Yeah. No. So <laughs> uh, just think about 28 years old, you're divorced with two little kids. I had to learn to be alone. I, I don't really want to give that up. And to be in a relationship on another level for me, there was some things I'd have to compromise. So, you know, I'm starting to feel like eh, it's not so bad, such a bad deal. Um, I wasn't, they can't understand that I wasn't crushed because I didn't get engaged. Girl, are you kidding me? I just took a different road. That's all I did. I wasn't, no man is going to crush me. Nobody's going to upset me that much. Trust me on that. 
And I'm good. I'm good. So I didn't get engaged. A week later, I have this talk with him. I go get an apartment in the city. I'm out five nights a week and I'm doing okay. (laughs) And I still have my boyfriend who I love. David's a great guy. I love my house. We built this house. I'm here because I'm redoing my house. Yep. Um, yeah, it's really good. It's okay. Yeah, and at the end of the day, I feel like your relationship and the way that you handle things is so different than how a lot of people would, even the other women on the show. You don't see a lot of times someone getting along with their ex-husband the way that you and Frank do. I mean, Frank was talking about how you guys are soulmates and you said, you know, soulmate could be anybody, but the way that you guys are so close, I saw all that. Um, The way you guys are so close, you know, some people can't do that. Some people can't be okay with their exes. So it's so crazy to them. But I also think it's refreshing to see on your part. Well, I got a call. I got a DM from a woman today saying, please help me my husband cheated on me with a friend of mine and I can't get past it. And I see him every two weeks with the kids, but I can't move on. And she sounded bitter. Yeah. She was like, yeah, I don't call, I don't watch your show anymore. And I don't even follow you on Instagram, but can you help? Like she's yeah. already she's a young girl and she's a bitter woman. Like it started out like saying, yeah, I don't like this and I don't like that. And I'm broken. You're broken when you live like that. Okay. Not when you can't, get past it. So don't let them break you. And I said to him, I said to her, I didn't address like, listen, why should I answer you after you just like shit right. on my yeah. show and my fucking Instagram? Yeah. <laughs> I could, again, like I see through it. So that's really hard to do. But my dad told me the, the best piece of advice. Uh, your husband's dead. Go light a candle for him at church and move on. And I did. So I said to this woman, just act like the two people that you're pining over are dead and move on with your life. That's number one. And then the other thing is, it's such an anchor. Resentment is such an anchor. And I've gotten past so much stuff in my life. And that's why I like to talk to girls and younger people to say, you can have so much misspent time and you can have so much wondering about why somebody doesn't like you, why the other girls went out without you. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. A lot of things are not that big of a deal. Yeah. I love your whole attitude. No, and it does. <laughs> I feel like you have passed this down to you know your children too, because when we see your kids on the show, they're some of the most I would consider like normal <laughs> children that are on any of the Housewives franchises. Like I see your your kids, and I'm like, I would love to hang out with them because they seem like they are good, normal, fun people. They're good, normal, fun. They're almost too normal for me and Frank. <laughs> I don't even know how that happened because. Me and Frank, like, it wasn't a normal life for these kids. Right. Like, he was on boats, and he doesn't he doesn't lie, boats and hose, <laughs> or boats, whatever else he was doing. You know, I was just not the easiest mom. I'm a little ghetto. I, I beat their ass here and then. You know, I was, <laughs> you know, I wasn't the easiest mom. Like, put your fucking pajamas on. You know? <laughs> and then they turn out like normal. So I don't know how that happened, but they are very level-headed. Um, almost, I think, too much, like hard on them. I was at times. If I could take anything back, I would have been a little softer on them. But, <laughs> but mm-hmm. <laughs> in the back. But but they, they are like they're very sensible. They're super sensible, and they they sit and they talk sense to me even when it comes to the show. And if I have to, if something's going on, and I I will go to them for advice. And they're really good, and they're very good at pinning out who people are. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like a lot of people on the show, going back to the other point, are like stuck in their ways so hard that you just want to shake them? Like, I feel like Joe Gorga is kind of one of those guys that, you know, it's that Italian upbringing. He's older. It's he's never going to shake his views the way he looks at things. Does it like drive you guys crazy sometimes? It does. I I understand it. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If you can stay in that world, I had I was forced out of that world. Did I want it? get married and stay with that person and watch my kids grow up and grow old together with someone. Yeah. But life doesn't always give you that. So you can't, and you can't be narrow minded with other people who are living differently than you, which, you know, when you go through something yourself, it makes you wise to a lot of other things. It makes you open up to other, other things. And I've always been the person, like I like to sit back and analyze what's going on around me and they don't pay a lot of attention maybe to that. And if you don't do that, you'll never learn. 
like you will learn from outside of you. So I always like look at life like it's a play and uh, it's just different actors. And I usually, cause I look at it like that, I could tell how it's going to end. Like, oh, I've seen this play before. This is how it ends. And I'm always usually right. Yeah, you're just sitting back and observing everybody. <laughs> yeah, you learn a lot from other people and don't judge them, you know, just accept it. This is how come I'm not mad at them for asking me the same question 500,000 times and for not understanding it and still don't understand it. Right. Not mad at them because they still, I don't think they are busting my balls about it because they don't love me. They want what they have. They love their life. They love their, even though like Joe and Melissa are kind of working things out a little bit. They love their life. They want me to have it too. So how can I be mad at them for that? Right. Yeah. They don't do it out of, you know, it's not out of spite or to be evil or ill will. They just think, oh, you want to have this, but you're good with your life. Right. It's not like a cunty thing that they're doing. Yeah. (laughs) It's like this. It's like, but I'm, but don't you, I don't want to see you alone. I don't want to see you going places by yourself. I want somebody to say, oh, I'm with you. You're my girl. You're leaving a party with them and you're coming home with them, you know? Um, but And that's very nice that they want that for me. And maybe someday I'll have that. But I'm okay without it. Yeah, definitely. And the finale, it seemed like you guys um, kind of left on like a little bit of a I don't know, kind of cliffhanger situation. Like it was over, but it was some things were all kind of up in the air. So how do you, how do you prepare for the reunion in times like that? Because obviously now we're going to see the the reunion coming up and the Jersey reunions are always the best. (laughs) It's good. Oh, it's good. So how do I, you can't prepare for it. You just can't. You know that's your one chance to talk about and get things off your chest or explain something that you said during the season that you wanted to give an explanation for because not everybody receives what you said by what you meant by it, right? It's very hard to articulate your feelings, especially this group. Yeah. Growing up, growing up, it was like, get over it. You know, don't be a crybaby. So you don't get a chance to say, let's talk about how you feel. Like Frankie's still looking for that from me. I will not do it. So because of that, you don't really know how to, articulate how you're feeling. I'm getting to learn that. So sometimes when things are said during the season and in the heat of the moment and the pressure and the fighting, you go at each other and then you got to kind of take it back or you say something, the public's like, Oh my God, how could you say that? Fuck you. Fuck you. You know? Yeah. And you, you get one chance to explain it if it comes up. So preparing for the reunion, you don't know what you're walking into. You don't know what subjects are coming up and there's a lot of animosity. Um, yeah, it's rough. I mean, and then we got to focus on looking good. Do you know how much plastic surgery I had before reunion? (laughs) What did you get done? A lot. Wait till reunion. I say it at reunion. (laughs) (laughs) Did you, did you tell, did you tell David about it before you did it this time? (laughs) I'm not, okay. I can't say everything because my dad's here, but I can tell you I got liposuction on every limb. And then I had some other stuff done. You'll hear at reunion. Okay. Well, you know, and you always look fabulous. You get the word, you know. Everyone it, always looks so good. And it so does kind of seem like everyone had a, I saw some pictures, like everyone went for like kind of a coordinated vibe, right? Like everyone was kind of like in. Well, out there, yeah. They're like, well, this is the theme. Yeah. The background was amazing. It was like the Jersey Shore. Yeah. So that was really cute. Uh, we all had dress malfunctions. <laughs> My dress was butched the day before because my typical the tailor that i use um moved so i used somebody new and she destroyed my dress and it got shipped from turkey that's oh. got to be a nightmare oh that was a nightmare and i had my heart set on that dress so i had to drive two hours each way to have the whole dress taken apart material added and have it fixed by laura's boutique in carmel new york thank you <laughs> amazing woman I love the shout out i feel like add that stress onto going into the reunion and people are just about to pop off you know when something just like a little something just ticks you off and you just explode i feel like that's like something with the dress How, where does everyone stand now hmm. the way they left <laughs> stay tuned <laughs> Like, listen, it changes day to day. That's why you can't. It's reality, right? So life unfolds. Yeah. We we went into this with different intentions than this whole thing revolving around relationships, right? Right. We did. We said, oh, this is our storyline. This is COVID. We've been stuck in the house. 
what's going on in everyone's life. The same that's going on in the rest of the world. But what we didn't know was it was going to wind up to be one of the best seasons yet. And a lot of stuff like we got the poison out, as Joe Gorga says. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's it's just a, it's it's yeah. crazy. It was it, it is. Stand by your man is the name of the season for me. You know, the Patsy Klein song, Stand by your man. We all stood by our men. I stuck up for David. Um, you know, the whole thing with Jackie, she defended yep. his honor. Teresa was saying, you know, Joe, can you not talk about Joe? Melissa comes running out of the house. Don't talk about this. Then Jackie yells at Joe. J- Margaret goes, I could be mad at him, not you. Yeah. <laughs> all stand by your man. That is very true. I don't think I even realized that. And on top of that, like, you know, we saw Teresa finally with her new guy and how that has all gone down. How you've known Teresa the longest. We know that. How has, her. yeah, how has, uh, how has this new era Teresa been the, the girlfriend Teresa? Well, this is going to be a different Teresa because <clears throat> this man is an angel that fell off like a cloud. On top of that, he's hot. <laughs> Very, very, very successful. And now you have somebody that came along and said nice things, spoke gentle to her. She's been through a war. She's been through so much. She handled it like a boss, too. I mean, she did. And imagine, think about everything she's gone through. Who's walking into jail and coming out a year later? like, okay, let's go. Pick up where I left off. Like, this is a girl I grew up with. She never even... We never went against our parents, okay? So we grew up in strict households, and then all of a sudden life hits you in the face. I mean, I can't imagine coming home and saying to my dad, I have to go away for a year. Like, I can't even imagine. So I'm like, you know, now she gets her due. This guy comes along, he's like, I got this. He speaks nice to her. They do things together. She's a princess, a princess in this world. Like, everything you would want for that friend and everything she could ask for. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. That's really great to hear. I mean, I can't even imagine going through all the shit that happened with them. And also to play it out publicly, you know, everybody knows what's going on. And she has her girls and he has kids too, right? Like, so it's like a nice kind of- Beautiful blended family. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. That's that's great. He's a great, great, great guy. What is something that happened on this season that didn't air that you would have loved to see? A, a, a nice conversation with my father. So my father and I walked through the park and it didn't make the cut because my dad didn't film a lot this season. So they did take that part out. And I'm like, well, I want you to get to know my family. And my father explained a lot about who I am growing up. That kind of was a little bit of a revelation to me also. So he's like, you never let anybody tell you what to do. You like not, you know, having your independence. You've been like that since you're little. And he was explaining myself to me that I just was like, you know, never thought about. And that's, um, you know, my father and I have great life talks. He's very, very smart. He's very wise. I get a lot of what I know from my parents. And I just wish you could have seen that talk because a lot of girls would be like, oh, yeah, that reminds me of me and my dad yeah definitely and and just from him yeah. sitting there getting a little glimpse of him I feel like well, I wish we would have seen more as well yeah so next season you'll I, I'm one of five kids <clears throat> so next season you're gonna get to meet my crazy family we used to fight in school or like my family's very the close only trouble you ever got into was because you stuck up for other kids that were getting picked up so that's true. So my dad <laughs> went to the school and your kids beat somebody up today because somebody's getting picked on and we fight the bullies together. Honestly, so. sounds like a lot like my dad's family. Like I come from a very Italian family, like a lot of fighting, a lot of just passion. That's what I like to call it. Just passion. <laughs> yeah. So and, and wanting to do the right thing, sticking up for the underdog. And yeah. And my family's still like that. Like sometimes if I get in a fight on camera, my sisters call like they're going nuts. Yeah. I got to calm people down. And even like my friends from my old neighborhood, they are still so salt to the earth. I love them so much. They are so happy for me and the show and they watch it and they're so loyal. It's just, I love it. And, yeah. you know, I wish for everybody to have that. Mm-hmm. It's just the community, right? Like, like Rhea said, you know, 
we it, there's just a connection and we always have talk about this when we have the you guys on the housewives especially especially, especially from new, new jersey. jersey i'm from new jersey she's from long island so we like we're you both get, from big italian yeah. families like francesca mariano maria chiffo like we have like we have the whole <laughs> yeah. thing like my my grandma's the youngest of 12 kids grew up in queens okay. like we got, get it a million cousins a yeah. million a yeah. million like, cousins and first and second 40 yeah like yeah, the people that, that aren't your cousins like my, are your cousins when my grandma calls me and she's like i got you need to talk to this person she's your cousin i'm like i don't even know who that is right my my fam- i'm the youngest in my family and so they quiz me all the time they're like so who's this person related to and i'm like i have no fucking idea <laughs> oh i have God. no I idea have, i just show up and i say I hi never knows <laughs> but the oldest one always still had that cousin connection yeah exactly <laughs> exactly well but everybody but, but you know, if you're on it, like you got a call for your family, right? Oh, yep. do you are doing this? Oh, this one's a fan. I know. I, know. I yep. don't mind. I don't no, mind. no, it's no. great. And we wouldn't change it either. It's amazing. And that's why we also love watching um, the show because it's just feels like home. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're already, it's home. And that's why we do have a very strong following. Yeah. And we have people that stick with us through the years. Exactly. So, and Absolutely. It's it's it, growing. It really is. It does continue. It does continue to grow. I know I have a lot of friends who maybe didn't watch New Jersey, but now are like obsessed, love it, need to watch. Well, that's you, so thank you. Yeah, <laughs> of course, of course. Well, <laughs> we we have to wrap up, but Dolores, thank you so much um, for joining us. This was great. You are so sweet, and say goodbye to your father for us. He was love. <laughs> he was lovely. Um, <laughs> Me, I gotta do is man. I'll take you out to lunch. He's eating crackers and cheese. Right yeah, now. he's fucking starving. <laughs> he's like slow. Yeah, it's like let's. Let, let, let me say hello. Oh. Oh, oh, ladies, I was listening to you. You sound great. Oh, you thank you so you. much. You know? Oh, yeah, they're gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you send us off with a little piece of wisdom as we as we go? Oh, you you need you don't need wisdom from me. No, I was talking about your dad. Oh, my <laughs> dad. <laughs> Well, um, let, let me just use this. Um, use. Right now, I'm 75 years old. I look back on these years, and I'm very comfortable with what I've done and where I'm at. Will I change, would I change a few things? Perhaps, but not really. And I think I would still do the same mistakes because I enjoyed them. Okay, good. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. So Amazing. I hope you, I hope at 75, you, you could think that way regrets. and you could feel comfortable as I am. So then what, what he's saying is just do whatever you want to do. Go with your gut. You're smart enough. You know what you're doing. Yeah, that's Amazing. beautiful. Make mistakes. They're fun. Yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you Thank guys, guys so, so much. much. <laughs> we're excited to watch the reunion. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right, everyone. That wraps up today's episode of Chicks in the Office. We love you guys. Remember, push through, okay? If it's the middle of the week when you're listening to this, push freaking through. You got this. We'll talk to you on Friday. Love you.